Zach. Um, what are your initial takeaways from tonight's scrimmage? And did the defense end up winning 15 to 13? The, the defense ended up winning 19 to 13. Uh, or really, I'm sorry, they would have been 22. They would have gotten seven points there for the fourth down stop. Uh, they just probably didn't go up on the board. But I thought it was really competitive. You know, some of those drives stretched out. There's some good competitive red zone stuff. Um, you know, that red zone competitive period went for five drives, which was some great work. And um, saw some good things on both sides of the ball. And, and again, it was just one further look to get a chance to see some guys. We didn't tackle tonight. You know, we're, we're, we're at the point now we need to keep our guys healthy and, and keep them ready to play here two weeks from today. You know, we'd be walking off the field right now from that first game um, is what the feeling would be. And so, you know, right now we're, we're just going to make sure we, we keep our guys healthy and still get some quality work in. How difficult is it, Zach, to, to not have officials, even, you know, in something <laughs> like that? I mean, that, that's, a, that's a tough dynamic, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, Doug Rossfeld can't win. Offense is mad at him, <laughs> defense is mad at him. Um, so, you know, he's, uh, yeah, he, he, so, but he, again, those guys do a great job for us. And, and uh, that is a little bit of the hard uh, part of it. You know, you got the crowd murmur, you know, so we got a good feel for what that noise is going to be like. And it is enough to where you can't communicate uh, really well, you know, from someone who's 15 feet away from you. You know, you got to be up close. And so, um, you know, there's there's a lot of shouting and no one really understands what you're saying. So you got to utilize the headsets. And um, so that part was interesting. So what how about would you assess Joe's Bill? performance today? Uh, go ahead, Bill. I saw you talking. I'll come back to you, Ben. Uh, just uh, uh, thoughts on Joe Burrow's effort tonight? Yeah, I, I, thought, I thought it was solid. You know, there were some good things. And I, I noticed some drops. You know, we got to do a better job catching the ball. That's one thing that really stood out. And really, there was a game winner there in, in that red zone drill. That would have been a walk-off touchdown there to win the game, and, and we didn't get it. And so those are some things we got to clean up. Um, overall, you know, th these scrimmages are good. Having the stadium with the play clock and uh, my communication, you know, can improve as well to the quarterback. So it's good to kind of get some of those kinks out of the way early. Go ahead, Ben. Well, that was kind of my question. But also, I guess on that pick by Jesse Bates, I mean, how would you have how would you have ruled that? Is that an interception? Is that PI? How, how do we view that? Couldn't see. You know, that's that's the one area I have no vision on whatsoever. So I, I wasn't clear on if it was an interception or a drop or um, what exactly happened. I'll, Zach, have, what I'll have to check the tape to know. Sorry about that. What did you think of Joe's decision-making, especially on some of the scramble stuff where maybe he put a ball just a hair too far for guys, but it was in the spot where really the receiver was the only guy that was going to have a chance at a couple of those? There's some things that you can clean up there, but it's encouraging. There, there's some possibilities for some uh, explosive plays that are off schedule. And that's, that's always exciting to get, to add to your offense. Sometimes you don't call the, the perfect play. And, and when your quarterback's able to extend it and guys are in phase with him and can create those plays down the field, that's, that's a great quality to have. The first touchdown at Tyler, did that, did that count? The first touchdown at Tyler Board, or did he juggle it, or, he, or was it good? I was calling the plays on offense, and I was right there on the sideline. So that was a touchdown in my eyes. You know, maybe if I was uh, on the other sidelines, I wouldn't have seen it that way. But that's the way I ruled it. Zach, how important was getting clarity with the linebacker room in, in tonight's scrimmage? And is that a little harder to do without tackling? Do you feel like you learned a little bit about that position group tonight? It, it, it's hard without tackling. There's no question. But, but the one thing we can see and grade them on is the communication, getting lined up, getting aligned, getting other people around them lined up, being in the right gap when you're supposed to be there. Obviously, the, the tackling portion of itself is, is going to be live and in person here in two weeks. But I've been impressed with the job that Al has done with those guys, and, and they're all – um, as advertised, it's a really uh, competitive room right now. And, uh, you know, there, there's, there's obviously roles for, for several of those guys. Prather's looked real comfortable in pass coverage. I mean, tonight he ran, uh, you know, deep ball down the field. He's done it a couple times at training camp. I mean, he looks real comfortable, you know, in his pass coverage and running with people well down the field. I apologize. What was the name you said? I missed the name. Pratt. Pratt. Yeah. yeah. I mean, all of our guys have stepped up. The guys that were here last year. Pratt was a rookie last year. He's not playing like a rookie this year. You know, he's, he stepped up and made the strides he needed to make. And so, again, he's, he's uh, you know, when you're calling plays on the offense, it's a little bit hard to get a great assessment of the defense right now until we get a chance to walk through it. But i uh, been impressed with the way that those linebackers have made strides all camp. How did you feel the old line play, Coach, or do you need to look at the tape? Yeah, there, there's some obviously some challenges going against our defensive line. So when the 1-0 is going against the 1-D, um, you know, as a play caller, it certainly – affects the way you think when you see some of those guys we got up front and so so again there's there's some things we're going to have to clean up and and again there were some big positives there we got some nice runs and had some time on some of those throws that that got extended plays um they did a good job covering up the guys so joe could move around a little bit so again they're just just as usual there's some good and some bad there 
I mean, which, uh, running, which running back impressed you the most tonight? Yeah, again, the linebackers and the running backs are the, the hardest ones to assess. But, um, you know, I, I noticed some good things from all of them. And, and I, I thought Samaje had some nice, strong runs. He hit the hole quickly. Um, you know, Travion and, and Jaquez did some good things as well. And we got Gio a couple couple things in there early. So, um, overall, that, that group has, has, has been on the up and up. The drops tonight, do you credit that to, you know, mental ed- execution? Was that just defense making a nice play, getting involved? Or? There were certainly some instances where there's some tight coverage, and the, those defenders made the plays on a lot of those 50-50 passes, you know, and, and oftentimes they had the back to the, to the quarterback and, and the receivers going up to make the play, and um, the defense came out the winner on a lot of those. And then a couple of them were just drops, you know, and so, again, we'll, we'll get a better picture of that when we see it on tape, but uh, that part was a little disappointing. Was one of you about the protection. I was wondering what you thought about the protection on that last but when uh, Joel was but when, uh, when the offense was going in for the win. I was wondering what your thought was on the protection, on the pass protection. Got one more than we can handle, so ball's gonna have to come out. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like uh, from a protection standpoint, running backs are doing a pretty good job in blitz pickup. All of them seem to be pretty squared up and, and getting after a little bit. That, that's you know Jamal Harps on that like crazy. You know if you want carries, you got to be able to protect in the pass game. And, and uh, that's been a big point of emphasis this, this entire training camp. And, um, you know, there, there's certainly some, some moments where the linebackers get the better of them and some of those safeties. But um, overall, been impressed with the progress the, back, the, the, the running backs have made in pass protection. Zach, you had a quick moment on the sideline before the uh, scrimmage got started um, with Joe Mixon. Uh, do you have a timeline on when you'd like Joe back on the field? Um, you know, just working back um, when he starts to feel better. And so it was good to see him around. And uh, I, I can't tell who's talking to me. Someone must be wearing a mask or something. Um, just how much of a positive sign was it to have him out there, even though he wasn't taking part? He's always got great energy, you know. And so it's, it, uh, it reminds me of last training camp during those preseason games, you know, when he was getting a lot of carries and he was right there next to me. But, um, you know, Joe's always upbeat and has great energy. Is that, I, is you expect him like, back anytime soon? Uh, we'll take a day to day with Joe. Zach, Zach, I know this is going to sound like a very stupid question here, but have you seen enough from from uh, Joe Burrow to, to feel like you feel comfortable where he's going to be the unquestioned starter for Week One? Yes. What 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 about what you've seen over the first two scrimmages gives you that comfort that you need? It's command of the offense, um, leadership in the huddle understanding of what he's got to do to move this offense, uh, his competitiveness, his urgency. Certainly there, there's, there's areas to clean up. There's, there's no question about that, but um, he's, he's got a great grasp. You know, just going over the call sheet with him today before the scrimmage, he's, um, we're in sync in terms of how we see things and think of things. And, you know, it, we haven't had a chance to be on the field too much together, but it is important to um, start to see things the same way. And so I really feel like we're making – um, a lot of progress in that direction. So he's just been impressive. You know, he, he's what we expected when we took him number one overall. Um, hasn't disappointed. One day he's been out there. Obviously, no AJ tonight. Would you anticipate him on, on Thursday if, when you scrimmage again, or are you, are you good to go with him now? We'll see. It'll be day-to-day, and, and we won't scrimmage on Thursday. You know, it'll end up being a more of a mock game. Um, again, just, just as we, we think about the best way to be ready for next Sunday, um, we'll get we'll get three days of practice in this week, but Thursday night will not end up being a scrimmage. It'll just be my game to work through some of the mechanics of uh, playing our stadium, going through warm-ups and all that stuff. Tonight, Coach, uh, you, 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 the numbers weren't huge. I mean, it looked like 10 offensive linemen were available. looked like seven defensive backs, four wide receivers. You didn't have a ton of bodies out there. Mm-hmm. You, uh, you know, you got a, a lot of guys, a lot of snaps, though, obviously. Yeah, a lot of guys got good work, you know, and they're going to be tired. In the first game, they're going to be tired. And that's, that's the biggest thing we stress to them is getting used to these drives on offense and defense, these long drives. You, you know, we need your best when it gets down in the low red zone. So I think it's a good experience for these guys to have to go through that tonight. Coach, I noticed John Ross had a thicker arm brace or sleeve that, than he had in, in practice. Is, is that still okay and you just left him out for precautionary reasons or has anything changed? Yeah, just for precautionary reasons. And then as far as uh, wide receivers go, Mike Thomas continues to, to stand out and show he has a good rapport with Joe Burrow. What, what have you seen from him over the past couple of weeks and, uh, and how impressed are you? I've seen it the last three years. You know, he's an explosive guy. He's got good knowledge of our offense. Um, and so he, he's, he's a quarterback, funder, receiver, you know. And so, um, again, he, he had another nice day tonight. But he's had a really strong training camp so far.
Any more for Coach? Coach, and anybody on the back end, any any defensive back, you, you know, you when you call the play and you're looking at things as a former quarterback, any any defensive back stick out to you? Like, uh, you, you know, you, you mentioned uh, uh, William Jackson, you know, during the scrimmage on Friday, he, he jumped out at you. Anybody jump out at you tonight that made some plays? All those guys have had their moments, you know, and, and they got some tough tests in front of them. We, we got a, a receiving core that will really stress you. And so, you know, there's going to be times they give up plays. Uh, but, again, tonight, when we, when we go back and watch the tape and see who was, um, who was a part of those contested uh, incompletions, because most of them were incompletions. And so, you know, overall, I, I just thought the DBs were, were tight in coverage. They made the plays that came their way. And, uh, you know, each one of them has shown some nice flashes. It looked like Tony Brown had a good night. He had uh, two near uh, interceptions. You, yeah. know, you would probably like to see those picked off, though. You know, Tony made some nice breaks on the ball. And, and again, that is the biggest thing we need to see from those corners is just finishing the play. And uh, we'll get there. But, uh, but, again, they're getting hands on the football right now, which is encouraging to see. And now we just got to do a great job finishing those. Real, real quick, how would you describe Ryan Finley's development from last year to this offseason? Yeah, he's got a much better grasp of the offense, you know. And, and I was impressed with him last year with how he picked it up, especially those weeks he had to play um, his preparation during those game weeks. And, you know, it wasn't always the best situation for him. It, it was tough to play quarterback in those circumstances oftentimes. And, and I always feel like he gets a bad rap for a lot of that stuff. But um, he's gone about his business. He's not phased by anything. He's poised and ready to play. He knows he's one snap away. And so just, just really impressed by the way he goes about his work, his knowledge of the offense, the, the questions he asks. He's really, um, in his second year, he, he's really become an NFL quarterback from the mental standpoint of things. Um, and so just, just again, uh, feel like we got a, a great number two there. Joe Burrow starts out 0 for 3, not really all his fault. There, drop, there was a drop, at least one there that I can recall. But, man, he just seems to stay put. And he doesn't panic. He just stays poised. I think he completed like seven or eight in a row after that. Poise is a middle name. I guess that's that's one way to put it. You know, it's um, not much phases him. You know, probably the the thing that gets him the most is when he feels like the 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 errors on his his own. You know, to to not do, duplicate the same mistake twice. Um, but again, he's a competitive guy, and and um, we expect him to lead this offense to a lot of points. Any more for coach? Thank you all. Yep. Thanks, coach. Thanks, coach. Thank you.
Hey, Joe, uh, if you wouldn't mind, could you just give us a quick count to five, and uh, uh, that way everyone can find your video. One, two, three, four, five. All right, everyone, go ahead and fire away. Joe, how would you assess uh, your performance tonight? Uh, I mean, it's not my best. Um, obviously, you know, you'd like to, you know, I'm always striving for perfection, and today wasn't perfection, but, you know, we're still working through some kinks and some logistics stuff. Um, so I'm still confident that we're, we'll be ready for the first game, but, you know, it's not what you'd like to see today. Do you feel like you improved from your first preseason game? I mean, sorry, your first scrimmage to your second? Um, individual performance, no, but I think I'm getting better every day. I'm, I feel more comfortable than I did last week. Um, so I think, you know, my overall performance is, is still getting better. Joe, did this feel a lot different or a little different from that first scrimmage? Was it a lot different or a little different? Which, which would you say it would be? Uh, I would say a lot different. You know, the mm -hmm. first, first scrimmage we were kind of hitting on all cylinders today was, you know, we had some rough patches as an offense, but uh, we'll watch the film and, and critique ourselves and get better. What did you think of our I'm sorry. Just off the hip, I mean, what, what kind of – what do you think kept you all from kind of finding that sink that you all had in that first scrimmage? Uh, you know, we had some guys out. Um, we weren't live, so, you know, it's tough to run the ball when any kind of touch is a tackle. And then, you know, we didn't execute the way we needed to. I didn't execute the way that I needed to. Um, so I know, you know not, not everybody was happy with, with, with how we played today. Did the crowd noise have any effect on the logistics? Was it, uh, was it tough to get used to or was something obviously you haven't had before? No, I don't think I don't think that had anything to do with it. It was it was out. It was good to have it out there to um, get used to what it'll be like in the games without fans in the stadium. So um, we tried to make it as game like as we could. I would imagine if had louder. I would imagine if had louder crowds. You could, yeah, it wasn't yeah. too hard for you. <laughs> yeah, I played in the SEC. But there's there's some loud crowds out there. Joe, it looks like uh, you won't have an officiating crew on a football field with you until you play the Chargers on the 13th. Is that is that kind of weird? Is that kind of odd not having them out there? I mean, there were some calls where you know what what really happened. What was the deal? Is that is that kind of a tough thing to deal with? Yeah, it is. You you know the guys that we have out there on staff that are kind of being our makeshift officials um, are doing a good job and trying to make it as game like as they can. But you know, you really won't get that experience until the first game. When you started out uh, 0 for three. And then you completed like seven or eight in a row. I mean, is that just is that just Joe Burrow? I mean, no panic, all poise. I mean, yeah, sure. I'm not. You know, if I go for three, or for ten, I'm gonna keep throwing the ball and keep trying to execute the offense the way that I need to to do to win. Um, so I'm not focused on you know the last play. I'm I'm living in the moment on the field. Every play is life or death to me. Joe, we saw. Uh... Uh, touchdown to Tyler Boyd and a couple of good connections. How, how important and, and invaluable is that to just build that connection with him when, you know, you have AJ and Joe sitting now? I mean, he's one of your top playmakers, right? Yeah, TB's going to have a big season, I think. You know, he's been working hard and, and really understands what we're trying to get done on offense. Um, I, I have a great connection with him right now as well as a lot of other guys. Joe, along those lines, I mean, how concerned are you about not really having any kind of game scrimmage type experience with AJ, you know, at, at this point? Um, you know, we get, we get our individual routes um, that are full speed. So that's really – I just need to see him run full, full speed routes, and I've seen that, and I feel comfortable with how he run, runs routes. He feels comfortable with how I'm going to throw them. Um, the one thing I think I am a little worried about is not getting hit until the first game. Um, I've been kind of lobbying to, to be live in one of these scrimmages. I don't know – how well that's going to go over if I'm going to get my wish, but uh, we'll see. I don't think you're going to get your wish. On that. <laughs> um, but that's actually a good question. Do you feel like you are, you're getting a feel for what the NFL pass rush is going to be like when they can't sack you? Yeah. I mean, you do as much as you can, but you'll never really know until you get out there and you're live and the bullets are flying. Um, so I'm, I've always prided myself with, you know, my movement in the pocket. And so it's just going to have to be quicker and faster decisions at the NFL level. Joe, you've been one to uh, not avoid contact uh, when you've been out of the pocket and running. Um, is, do you feel like that's going to change? I mean, do you have to adapt that style to maybe slide a little bit more? 
yeah, I'm going to slide a little bit. I'm getting paid lots of money now. That was my thing all the time. Once they start paying me money to play this game, I'll probably start protecting my body a little more. Joe, there were some uh, 50-50 balls, uh, not just with the number one offense, but overall the number twos uh, coach was referencing that the defense did a better job than they had uh, up to date on, on uh, getting their share of the 50-50 balls. You, that's not going to deter you from doing your thing, though, right? I mean, you have utmost confidence that if, you're not gonna, if they're not going to catch the football, the defense won't. Yeah, I'm, if we have one-on-one -on -one coverage, I'm going to throw it up to my guys and expect them to make a play. Those aren't 50-50 balls. To me, those are 80-20. You know, I think you know, our guys get paid a lot of money to catch footballs, and the defense gets paid a lot of money to cover, not, play, not catch footballs. So I'm going to, I'm going to trust my guys and put the, put the ball in the, in the right places, and they're going to go make plays. That last snap, that fourth down, uh, Coach, I guess, kind of alluded to a blitz. Uh, that, that would happen on that, the, the fourth down from the eight or wherever you guys were trying to get the winning touchdown? Yeah, yeah, they, they, they brought a good blitz. It's a good blitz that they have. It's, it's tough to block. Um, so it was, you know, I didn't get it picked up the way I needed to, and I had to, you know, get the ball out of my hands and, and hope he made a play for me. Joe, y'all went out to the uh, the National Underground Railroad uh, Freedom Center yesterday, and, and you know Mike Brown was out there. How important was that for you to kind of see that from the ownership to that they were involved and kind of were, were involved in the conversation the way that the players had wanted uh, throughout the week? I think that was great for you know our team, our organization, and for the community to see Mr. Brown and the whole family there with us, showing their support, leading the charge um, towards change, and you know a lot of guys. And a lot of people in this building have worked really hard um, to drive change and to find foundations that we can support and find events that, that we can do to kind of facilitate change. Um, and we're going to continue to do that. That was just one step in this process, one baby step. It, it was a great event um, with the full support of the organization. And we're going to continue to do what we can to, to facilitate change as far as race relations and police brutality and, and try to unite this country. Joe, the last time you made a speech like you made at the Freedom Center was your Heisman Trophy acceptance speech. And you, uh, not, your, your speech led to like $600,000 being raised for a hell of a cause. If, uh, do you think this, there, there was a plan that was executed, you know, after your speech. Now the speech is the first step for everybody. And, but do you think there's a plan in place that could lead to six, $700,000? You know, there is, there is a plan in place that, you know, we're going to roll out here in the next um, year. You know, the, there's events getting put on, there's money being um, donated and gathered for, for foundations, and there's going to be a lot of good that comes out of it. Yo, I know uh, you guys got to tour the Freedom Center, too. Was there anything that you saw inside that, you know, left a lasting impression on you or is, like, memorable to you? You know, the number one thing that hit me was the fact that the education system didn't really educate me um, on a lot of topics. You know, they, the specific example would be um, the black codes in Ohio. I, I had no idea what those were, and, and the, freedom, the people at the Freedom Center did a great job explaining that to me, um, how you had to have, have a permit if you were black in Ohio to, to live here and you, how you had to have two people vouch for you and pay $500 so you could live in the state of Ohio. Um, I had no idea. I had never been taught that information. So that was, I think, great for a lot of people to, to hear that information. I think it would be great for a lot of people in the community to hear that. A lot of your teammates have told stories about things they've experienced. So a lot of your black teammates, is there anything, have there been more than one, occasion where it's opened your eyes real wide that I mean how could that have happened to somebody there really, there really has been you know when you're a white player you don't think about half the things that you know your teammates think about you know the th things that they have to talk to their kids about um, it just doesn't even cross my mind and to hear that is really eye-opening I won't share any specifics because that's not my place um, but there has been a lot of stories that have been eye-opening Hey, Joe, how was the decision made for you to be one of the two that would talk there? Was that a, a vote? Did you step up to do that, or how did that come about? So Trey was the one that kind of 
um, wrote the the mission statement. Um, so he was going to read it, and then my teammates thought it would do um, it would have a great impact if I read it. Um, so they they kind of asked me to read half of it, and I uh, wanted to make sure that I didn't take take away Trey's opportunity to to read what he wrote. But they you know said that that was okay, and that um, I should be the one that read the second half. How'd that make you feel? It made me feel really good. You know, I think, you know, my teammates have, have done a great job of making me feel comfortable and, and part of the team. And, you know, it's not always the case as a rookie. Um, so I think it, it really did make me feel at home. Joe, uh, but I'm wondering when you stop me because... I'm sorry, you're not like now. Can you start? Have you Can you... No, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Do we have any more questions for Joe? I do have another question. Uh, it was a little bit hard to tell on some of the things what counted and what didn't count tonight. Did the, What happened on the first touchdown pass to Boyd? Did they blow that dead because of a sack? They called it a sack, yeah. And how about the interception? Um, there was mixed signals on that <laughs> interception. I heard defensive pass interference. I heard incomplete. I heard in interception. I'm not really sure what they what they ended up calling. Joe, do you feel like you're tracking in a good way um, based on your experience last year and in, in your overall experience in, in football every year? Are you tracking in a good way for the opener against the Chargers? Do you feel good about where you are right now? I feel good about where I am right now. I'm not where I need to be yet. You know, I still have a lot of work to do in these next two weeks before I play on Sunday, but um, I feel good about where I'm at right now. I think my teammates feel good about, you know, where we're all at right now, but this, the, the, the pregame work, the game plan work is not even close to finish. So we still got these two weeks to, to hone our skills and then get ready for that first game. It looked like Hubbard was trying to give you a pretty good look. Uh, he kind of chased you all over the yard today. Uh, what yeah, you he, was getting, about, he was kind of in your face quite a bit, wasn't he? Yeah, he was getting after it. That was good to see. You know, that was kind of um, my first full-speed reps against Sam in a long time. And so he was getting after it. That was really good to see. Joe, you mentioned being two weeks out. Just how anxious are you? I mean, you guys don't have any preseason games. You're not really going full go live stuff. How anxious are you just – as a competitor, play a full go game again? You know, I'm not too anxious yet. Like I said before, I still have a lot of work to do before I'm ready for that game. You know, I still have uh, – I've watched a little Chargers film, but not a lot. So I still have to dive into that. We don't even have a game plan ready yet. So I'm still in camp – in fall camp mode right now um, and still have these two weeks to, to study and get better every single day before, before that game. Joe, you, you seem to be a guy that loves the grind. I mean – some guys, you know, have, have their days where, eh, might not be as focused as, as other days. You, you seem to – every day seems to be real important to you, and you don't want to waste it for your development. I mean, how, how do you stay so focused like that all the time? Yeah, I mean, if you waste a day, there's somebody out there that didn't waste a day and you lost the day. So I'm, I'm a competitor. I want to win every single day, and I'm always competing against myself to, to get better every day. And when I compete against myself, I'm also competing against all the other quarterbacks, all the other defenses, all the other defensive coordinators in the league. So I can't waste a day, especially as a rookie. Um, I'm going to attack every day like, like, it's, like it's Sunday. It's like it's the Super Bowl. So I'm gonna, that's how I'm going to approach it. Hey, guys, just one or two more for Joe. we got to get him out of here. Do you think uh, that, that your defensive front in particular – um, and the Chargers, and you know Bosa, you know, they've got other defensive players as well. Do you think your defense, though, when they give you the look like they gave you tonight up front, um, can't be much better than that? We've got some guys on that defensive front. DJ, Mike Daniels, Sam, you know, Carlos didn't practice today. Um, Carl, we, we have some guys up there that, you know, I think are going to cause a lot of problems for a lot of offenses. All right, that looks like it'll do it. Joe, thanks for your time. I appreciate yep. it. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Thank you.